So yeah, I've been uh, probably mentioning this to you guys for a while now, but I'm gonna build a PC because it's been something I've been wanting to do for years now. Well, it just so has it that <laughs> it just so has it that we have both made builds for you. Yeah. This week. <laughs> we didn't even cool. know. So, like, I mean, I've always like I played PC games in the past, and like I've gone into PCs to change video cards and change out RAM and stuff, but I've never like built one from scratch before mine has linux on it because i hear hands. that's where the new thriving games are oh yeah that's what that yeah, is saying it's the future the future is linux the future so i should get a linux box except for steam works perfectly on windows 8 <laughs> hey just linux, saying baby but like and the other thing about it too is like there's kind of this like sense of you build your first PC, you like really become a man then. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. It's that like... is definitely, that's like, that's like, like South African tribes, like when they dip their hand in a pocket full of bees. <laughs> yeah. And instead, you're just building a or computer. Like, it know, sounds much, much like, more. Like, like, as a man, you have to be able to, like, go out into the woods with just, like, a knife and, like, you know, a few, a, a bunch of matches, a, a, a thing of string and, like, yeah. survive for, like, three days. But I feel like these days, to, like, prove your manhood, it's just like, well. Go hop on New Egg and all you have build to do, yourself a PC. All you have to do now, like all, you're like once you build this PC, you are instantly part of the PC master race. You are. Oh, you're really? better you'll, than everyone you'll else. Never, once you'll you never, you'll never use club. your PlayStation again. Yeah, you really. Will. You will. Interesting. I, I wipe my, my I wipe my ass with my Wii Mote. <laughs> <laughs> well, who doesn't do that? And my PlayStation Three. I just like I just like cranked it up there <laughs> and just swiped. Didn't that kind of hurt? No, not at all. Oh. Did you hook and pull? No, 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 I didn't like push it inside. I just in the crack. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't even care anymore. This went south. I got a Blu-ray player on my computer. Don't need a PS3. That, yeah, yeah but true. f you, Sony. I'm gonna talk about you later. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, end, end of cold <laughs> open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Tech Buzz, your raw and slightly inebriated look into the world of technology. I'm Nick Smock, and I spent way too much time doing time doing my hair today. Oh man, I'm Ryan Splitzer, and I spent zero to no time doing my hair today. <laughs> I'm Lucas Ritter. Don't follow me on Twitter. <laughs> We're here to talk about this week in technology because we oh, missed last wow. week. Uh, thanks to Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So Frank's thanks giving, to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um, again, for however many weeks in a row, we do not have email, Twitter, or Facebook questions, and it's actually like we're Lucas is clinically depressed now. I've He's, always been clinically depressed. No, this is this is really like hitting home for him because he just he can't do it anymore. Just you know, come on, people. You, I know you have questions. Just ask us. Yeah, that's all you please. need to do. But we're gonna start off today with a little gaming console that came out uh two weeks ago yeah wait two weeks are ago. we talking about the checkerboard that i got that has shot glasses instead of checkers well it probably runs crisis so that's true uh, unlike the wii u <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> so burn. we're gonna talk about how the wii u could be cool could have been cool but it totally is not i'm gonna disagree i'm gonna stop you right here and i'm gonna say i want a wii u oh i do too but it's not cool <laughs> Well, yeah, but it's go- it's going in that entire thing of, hey, we're going to sell these games for... Okay, it's going Nintendo's way. I'm going to picture they're going to okay, sell... Okay, that's always a really it's, promising it's probably, business plan. No, they're going to sell a crap load of these things. Um, and then no one's going to use them. Exactly. I wipe my ass with my Wiimote. It wasn't, no one will use them. It but, wasn't selling the same way the Wii was when it first arrived on the scene. Yeah, I will say that, but it was and still I, sold out. And I think I have a yeah, but good, that's an I think I have yeah. I think I have a fairly good explanation on why it didn't sell as well as the Wii did. What's and that it? is because people who own a Wii and use their Wii regularly have Wait, no. There are people, that? old people, and people with small children that have never played video games in their life. Those two demographics. One more thing I'll add to that. People who like almost exclusively watch Netflix on their Wii. Okay. A lot. That's also true. You know, there's those people. Um, but 
those people have no reason to spend what is it 250 350 dollars Two, 250 I think. 250 on a wii u yeah. because their wii works perfectly fine and they have the games they want to play they have Do you mario kart was even worse and there are no games for the wii u just the like the wii PS3. in canada that's 99 dollars and doesn't have internet the wii c Oh, the mini, that mini Wii. Wii, the mini Wii. The Wii. Have C, you like heard about? Wii. Have you heard about? Yeah, yeah. This? I saw that. I saw that Best Buy. Like, I'm sorry. I am completely. What are you, what are you no, supposed to do with that thing? Yeah, no. Let's talk about that yeah. real quick. The, so the Wii Mini is basically a Wii without. First of all, GameCube support is gone. Honestly. Well, GameCube support is actually gone in some software updates. Oh really? With the Wii? There are certain GameCube games that will no longer play on the Wii. Oh. But I mean, that's just a few though. But still, Animal <laughs> Crossings. Oh, I never oh played that God. game. What? Never once. Oh man, that game is like I heard that game is great, like but... Minecraft basically mm. for the GameCube. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so there's that. But the more <laughs> the bigger thing is, is it's zero internet connectivity. Yeah. Okay. It. Okay. Now here's my defense. How many times have you played a Wii game online? Uh, very few. But I still like the concept of being able to update my console over the internet with new software patches and oh i don't because i can't remember us talking my about this netflix thing my wii's hacked oh really oh yeah but most of the people that use the netflix on wii it's they use the discs what yeah no wait there's minute, no wait disc minute, for wait netflix minute, yeah minute, no, 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 no 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 yeah yeah, 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 yeah. you you would you would uh purchase the netflix disc and it would unlock dvd support solely for netflix like oh, drm D- dvds yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh oh that is just strange that's kind of strange i know yeah. people that do it that's really strange it's kind of cool though i guess but like seriously guess, but hey let's unlock using dvds i have <laughs> I, I i have almost zero reason to have internet connectivity on my wii the little i play yeah. it you know what i you know what i use my wii for wiping my ass uh <laughs> playing ca- so clearly stated at the start of the show <laughs> playing castlevania <laughs> And playing Wolfenstein. Okay. Wait, Wolfenstein for Wii? Like Yeah, it's a virtual console game. Oh, on virtual But, but like how my did Wii you get those virtual console My Wii's games? hacked. How I got them you... downloading them on my PC and putting them on okay. a flash card or S D card and putting them All right, into so my Wii. You got them illegally. I wouldn't say illegally. No, 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 no. I'm Nick Schmack and I steal video games. I steal thirty year old video games that yeah. no one pays for anymore. I, I, I don't have a huge moral issue with that, but the thing is like I actually do kind of like the concept of even though I don't use it, I do like the concept of having a virtual console and things available to me if I wanna download them. Yeah. Right, right, right. But um I I don't know. I just don't see why they wouldn't include it. I don't know. I it's surprising. You know what me. though? Have you guys seen the console? It is really. Small. It looks really nice, though. It looks yeah, a yeah. lot nicer than the original Wii. It looks fine. I hate the way the original Wii looks. It was a stupid, stupid, stupid idea. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. It's just a little white box. That's it. I don't like it though. You gotta I don't remember like that angled stand that it's how on. How many years ago did it come out? You don't have to use the stand. Yeah, but it's still stupid. <laughs> You're paying for it. They could have knocked down five bucks. I'm off pretty of the sure price. I I threw the stand away the minute I got it. Well, yeah, same here. But like the reason I did is because I have an. 500 gig external hard drive with like every Wii game ever connected to it. Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you want to know my reasoning for why I don't think that it's going to succeed? Because our Wii at home is being used to hold up the Kinect. <laughs> like, does that just say anything about it? Like, I mean, it's true. It's like, it's I'm like Wii, right Wii, was that, Wii was that kind of like one time hit thing with sports and all this stuff. And it, I feel like you like Nintendo as a company can pull that off once and it's kind of like you just blow your load and then you can't <laughs> unless you, know, you, you can't do it again <laughs> not for but, a while <laughs> well yeah yeah I mean you, you got give it a couple hours you don't have the stamina to like to do that again you know that's oh, only that only happens just, every oh, so often. have you ever seen that picture of uh of Reggie with that creepy like rape face oh yeah and my that's body is ready that's all i that's all i picture when you said like <laughs> nintendo blew their load and he doesn't have enough stamina to go again it's reggie just going mm. well reggie's always ready his body is always ready. he's creepy <laughs> he's a creepy dude <laughs> yeah he's kind of strange you know what i want a nintendo power glove that would actually be pretty cool are we talking about things that got wait whatever the 
Power Glove, whatever. It was this old that. like it, yeah. it, they discontinued Eddie. it like two months after it came out. Okay. It's just like a virtual boy. Did you hear yeah. that the I'm getting off topic again. That's but fine. The Oculus Rift that uh oh, it's so cool. That got delayed another three months. Wait, what is I'm that? not surprised. It's, the Oculus Rift was the yeah. full view full field of view like headset, virtual reality headset. That you would connect like a controller to, and they only have Doom support for it right now. Maybe Quake. Well, they're, oh, 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 they're oh, like hook look up around. Doom BFG I, I, with yeah. it. Yeah. I have seen that. I've seen the video. Uh, yeah. Who was it? Um, uh, Ross Miller. Yeah. Ross Miller did it. Yeah. Did a video with it. That thing was jank looking. Like they're like they're like oh, yeah. one that was working model. The it was clearly the yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's cool. It's yeah, like it duct tape and electrical tape all over yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and also, um, the Ua or Oua or whatever. The the oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah. That Macho is Man actually. That's what they should. I don't want to interrupt their... you. That should be their spokesman if he was still alive, <laughs> and he wasn't <laughs> doing Slim Jim commercials in heaven. <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage would be the perfect person to market. Oh yeah, because he could just go buy an oh yeah, and then and then you would just like and snap into a Slim Jim, and they could bundle them. Yeah. So like every oh yeah that you buy, you get like a a pallet of Slim Jims. A pallet, a whole like forklift yeah yeah like <laughs> they would drive a forklift to your house of slim jims no. un, un, unwrapped slim jims i can't say i've ever had a slim jim in my entire life i would swim in a pool of slim jims no they they suck but nick do you want to see how i feel about you interrupting me you know what aaron drank <laughs> <laughs> He's showing me his unlimited data. That's oh, uh, that's five point so, nine gigabytes. So Aaron and I drink. actually downloaded all, most of my pocket cast, all my podcasts at home on the Wi-Fi because I felt like seeing how low I could get it, but then I got lazy. Hmm. Oh man, I would try to see how high I could get it. Yeah. That's what I used to do. I used to download might torrents do on my phone. All you can eat buffet, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all you can eat buffet. <laughs> Back to no my original for you. thing that you I wanted eat, to talk you eat about. Too much. Now that I'm completely off right. topic and sidetracked, but the UA. Oh, yeah. is they're going to ship it on time basically is all they said which i was like Yay. don't believe that hopefully i don't i sh- didn't waste 99 dollars yeah. so let's talk about the wii U. back back to the wii u first thing i want to say is i heard somebody describe the process of actually if you want to transfer any like virtual console games you currently have on your wii to your wii u it's like the most insane messed up thing ever like you have to put your sd card into your wii and it will write it DRM write these things to your SD card and simultaneously erase your Wii of this stuff. And then you transfer the SD card over to your Wii U to transfer it and there is no reverse process to go back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize we lived in the Stone Ages anymore. Yeah, how crazy is that? And let's let's get off this whole DRM thing because it's bullshit. <laughs> Mark that. Mark it. <laughs> but um no, 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 because okay, I can understand. I do agree I can with understand. you, but I don't at the same. I, I understand, can understand yeah. DRM in the case of PC games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and f- physical discs. Yeah, physical like Wii discs, Xbox discs. This is why I love physical yeah. media. But, <laughs> but you know what? I and I know this isn't hard. All you have to do is. Link an account. Link right, the virtual console right. game to an account. You don't have to transfer. Right. You um, you should be able to log into your Wii U with your with your Nintendo email. account. Yeah. And Nintendo. then it should go. And then it should go. All Steam. <laughs> please. Gabe Newell's got some words. Yeah. Um. But no. All you have to do. All you should have to do is log into your your Wii U. Boot it up. Connect to the internet. Make sure there's software updates and everything. Connect your nintendo account that you have existing on your wii to the wii u and then it should go pop 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 up on your channels and it shows you know these grayed out versions of the virtual console games and you yeah. can click on it and go do you want to install this yep and then it should just be able to install it's, it it's insane it's absolutely what, insane this that is stone age junk right yeah. there that's it's crazy like i can't believe like you can't just re-download what you have already bought that is a you know whole lot of, that is a whole lot it's, of hoopla. it's 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 like it's like literally Nintendo when it comes to the internet. It's like they just like, it's like they don't get it. It's like it's, girls. It's like they don't. <laughs> it's like that awkward, you know, young preteen that under, doesn't understand girls yet. Well, I don't know how to approach them. I don't understand girls yet either. I don't understand girls yet uh, either. Well, I don't think anybody does. 
some better Upwards than others, maybe. True. But well, the Nintendo anyway. really doesn't. Yeah. No, they really. They're like. They're, they're like, like the asexual dude like, in middle school. They're like you've got like Xbox and PS3 on the side that are just like in their like, Corvettes. Well, like just and they're and they're like friends like, with Nintendo and they're, well, not necessarily friends. They're like frenemies with Nintendo <laughs> and they're like, hey, yo, Nintendo, you should go ask that girl out. And that girl is like um, non-DRM uh, games, non-DRM <laughs> like the internet, <laughs> the internet, and how to use it. And, he, and Nintendo just walks up to her and is like, hey, you want to hang out? Okay. Look at okay. Here's, go? A, here's a. I've got a. I've got a party we can go to maybe. But it's like we're just gonna play D and D all day in Mario Land, <laughs> Nintendo Land. You oh, look great on my. She's just like, oh no, thanks. Okay. Uh. So. Anyways. Think about it this way. You have your Android. You have your iPhone. Say your phone breaks. Yeah. Right. And you have your you have your like okay your Google account hooked up to your your Android you might have a mobile me account hooked up to your iPhone whatever right your phone breaks you send it in get it replaced get a refurbished phone whatever the minute you boot up that phone they're like hey put your information in you yep. put your information in and you know what happens when I put my information in my phone on a brand new phone <laughs> I go to Google oh, Play hey, and it says these are all the apps you had installed mm-hmm. you want to re-download them. Yes, please. Sure do. <laughs> How hard is that to do on the Wii? Not hard at all. Yeah. It's so it's absolutely insane. Thanks, Nintendo, for botching that one. Yeah. Let's talk about the hardware. Uh, so I guess, <laughs> Let's talk I mean, we that. mentioned the hardware a little bit earlier. It's nice looking, and I agree. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Nice looking. I thought that's what you said earlier. No, no, no. I think the the mini Wii looks nice. Oh, the mini Wii. I'm sorry. But I'm talking externally. Aesthetically, it looks nice. Oh. The hardware in the Wii U is like three years old. Yeah, no, it's it's weird. It's almost comparable with the Wii. I don't think the console no, is... it's comparable. It's supposed to be a little more powerful than like the 360 and the PS3. Oh, in terms of specs. That's not what yeah, I've read. Specs. That's, what I was, that's what I had thought I had heard. I'm gonna well, look this in terms up of looks, the console just like looks like a black slab like i don't i can't really think much of the console it's just like a thing to insert yeah. a disc into but that's the it's, thing is, oh it's you, a wii don't yeah, you kind of want know? that for like something that's going to be in your media center yeah. like i don't want anything i guess maybe that maybe that's just me but i don't want anything flashy when it's just gonna but, be sitting in my cabinet but, then but again, like, like you the know xbox what? Look looks at, really yeah, nice look at the new xbox the, P- the ps3 actually looks pretty nice yeah. too yeah. i kind of wish the ps3 would change their have you seen the uh, new the newer the newer ones? Do they have con- the Slims? Yeah, yeah those are nice. the one I have. Those are nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I like it. But anyways, do you like um, Virginia Slims? No, God. Um, I'm not a 90 year old woman who spends all of her money on lottery tickets and cheap <laughs> cigarettes. But uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I haven't looked at specs much for it, but I've heard that it's um, doesn't handle its memory very well. Uh, no, it's awful. Yeah. I, if anybody listens to the besties, they actually <laughs> talk about this. And I don't remember. I think it might have been Chris Grant was. Chris like, Plant. Chris Plant, sorry, <laughs> was like uh, debating this. But then like, uh, was it Griffin McElroy? Or was it Chris Grant that brought it up? That like they would like boot up their wii u and like boot up a game and then they would like have their gamepad with them and they'd switch over to like their cable yeah. because it took so long for a game to load that's ridiculous that is absolutely like that's insane. insane yeah are they still using a hard drive or they switch over to flash finally it's got to be a flash uh, it's got to be flash i, I saw 32 so. gig i'm looking on it, it up. i'm looking it up right 32 now 32 gig flash drive in there yeah that's the one yeah. thing that i really would that's the one thing that's that silly not to i hope that everything gets switched over to ssds because it doesn't really affect once the game's loaded it doesn't matter much but like even on the even, 360 even if you have 32 gigs that's not expensive no it's how not. much is a 32 gig flash drive what like 30 bucks yeah but it's like, it's like a little less than a bucket gig yeah <laughs> and like what i'm saying is like even on the 360 which is what i use at home i played halo 4 i'll talk about this later but <laughs> it's it's still just a little bit slow and laggy like when you're hopping in and out of certain apps because it takes that extra time to load up. The hardware isn't really all that crazy high spec, but it's just looking at just PCs going from a hard drive to an SSD, the load times get yeah. quartered. Like I, I don't see why they don't start using, which I guess I'm talking about seven-year-old hardware, so it's kind of hard to do, but yeah, I'm really I, I hope to God like PS4 and 720 would have 
Let's just use it. Can I? Can we? Until the new Xbox comes out, can we call it Durango? Durango. No, no, because that's a that's a code name for it, and I hate the name Xbox 720. And if they call it that, Microsoft has lost all respect for me. I like the. Uh, I don't mind 720 at it's all. It's a stupid name. I don't care. Wait, so Durango they, is the code name. For ha, it. Well, first off, has there been any rumblings of the actual name? No. Or is it just all press? speculation it's press this. speculation that it's called the 720 okay. that's why if you listen to the besties last week they call yeah. it durango all oh, the really? whole show because yeah. or they either like they either call it the next xbox 360 oh. or durango because okay. i hate oh god if they call yeah it it's kind of a dumb it's it's, it's, it's like name. that's just like yeah, lazy oh that's god. lazy yeah well well, first of all, the PlayStation Four definitely going to be a PlayStation Four. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, and you know what? Actually, that isn't lazy because they're following. This. Props to Sony for actually yes, following it. Because a, because a, I was my yeah, complaint about the iPad scheme. like a month ago. Yeah, yeah. And how they don't know how to name their products. Like either stick with it or don't. PlayStation Four sounds great. Actually, yeah. I think that's a good name. But yeah, Xbox Seven is kind of. But like, it just doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Like the 360 made sense. It's actually. Well, and like and like the well, boot screen on the 360 is a sphere, yeah. and it spins around 360 degrees. Is the boot screen on the 720 gonna spin around twice? <laughs> like yes. that's stupid. That's dumb. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't uh, even mind if they called it Xbox Next Gen or like something like that. Just like Next X- Gen, Next Xbox, Xbox Surface. Yeah. that's gonna be an actual tablet, not the. That's they already have that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um. um Sorry. Let's just, let's keep going. Well, one last point on the Wii U. On the Wii U, yes. Real quick. Not Topic that many no games. To talk about. I, I, okay, we'll continue. I'm just going something... to list them real quick. Yeah. Mario. Don't, Mario. Don't buy it if you have it for the Wii already. Which I do. And I'm not going to get it. Nintendo it's Land, a, which is pff, whatever. It's There's a couple good games on it. Okay. It's like it's like good if you have little kids. Okay. And then Zombie U, which I hear is actually kind of awesome. I've heard that's sweet. But... It's not enough to make me want to. But those are their launch titles, like Nintendo. Three of them. Light it up! Come on. Yeah. I mean, really, for me, all it would take is in the next Zelda, and I would be like, or the next Metroid, maybe. And I would. That is why. There. In that is I'm why. I'm worried about the next Metroid. Nintendo will sell a crap load of games, is because there are so many people like Ryan. No offense, I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, you got Zelda, yeah, you you've got s- Metroid, and there's games like that on there that are or, just. But like, they're not going to do even it. Mario. Like, yeah, uh, uh, even uh, Mario. Well, I know. not like this. This kind of like side-scrolling Mario, but yeah. I'm like. I loved Mario Galaxy One and Two. Yep. You they know were what? Amazing. You know what? And I would pick up you know what the I Wii want? U just for the next one of those. You know what I want? A new Mario Sunshine. Because you know what? And I don't care what you say. <laughs> You're one of the few. <laughs> Mario Sunshine was one of the best games for the GameCube, and I do not care what anybody says. I never beat that one. I never. It's tough. It's really weird. And, and it's crazy. such a good game. I want another Mario Sunshine. Give it to me, Nintendo. I don't think they will ever do that. Again. No, but, but you know what else they're not going to do? They're not going to make a good Metroid game. They're going to make a decent Zelda game. Decent. Yeah. They're they're not going to they're not going to come back on like any good titles. They're going to make another they're going to you know what they're going to do? They have this new Mario side-scrolling game that's exactly like the first one. Right. They're going to make another one of those. That's sad. That's Mario, really sad. Super Mario not. Galaxy <laughs> One and Two, they're both great games. Yeah, but they're really repetitive, or they're really similar. Oh yeah, they're similar. It's it was more and like of the same, but yeah, like, I, I ended Mario Galaxy the first one wanting more. And yeah, that's right. Why I love, but like going back, I have a feeling that it's it's gonna get stale at some point. It has to. Yeah, I I think I could go for one more Mario Galaxy right. game, and then I would be kind of done with that. But you know but, what I love is. Get rid of Mario Brothers, New Super Mario Brothers 2, which I'm sure. not even going to talk about the name on that one because New Super Mario Brothers 2, it's only new for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and and give me some, give me just some classic oh, Mario side uh, scroller. Oh, give me some classic Mario side scroller. That give me that. Pretty dope. Give me that core, core Mario. I don't want freaking oh. Little spinny propeller hats that I can fly up in the air with. I want fireballs. I want a tanuki suit. I want a frog <laughs> suit, and maybe the giant sock that the Goombas are in that you can jump around and stomp on people. <laughs> uh, uh, but here wait. is something Penny Arcade did a comic today or yesterday. Okay. And they honestly proposed. It's actually I'm gonna bring up the comic. Um, 
But they proposed a game for the Wii U, and it is by far the greatest concept for any Wii U game ever created. If I can find the comic here. Here we go. So, where did it go? Okay, well, I'll just explain it. So, it's D&D on the Wii U. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for this? Oh, boy. Everyone in the game, besides one person, has regular controllers, and they're playing on the screen. Yeah. And then the guy with the pad is the dungeon master. Oh, okay. And it and like the last pane was like, that one's free. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> that like, would actually be kind of awesome. I would, I, you know what? If that game was like polished enough, yeah. I would buy the Wii U just to have that game. That'd be so and much if they fun. Put, and if they put online multiplayer support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty or, awesome. Or, yeah. uh, actually, this is kind of funny because they in Nintendo Land, they have an F-Zero game. And like, yeah, I don't know. It's just like apparently the worst game ever because because That's you have bad. to every you have to you hit these checkpoints while you're racing right yeah and then you have to set the wii u tablet down so it can recalibrate your gyroscope oh so God. like every two and a half minutes you they pause the game and they're like and they're like hey we got to recalibrate your gyroscope and you have to set it See, down and wait for 30 seconds like what that may what? be that may be the worst part about this console is stuff like that that like no matter what game you're playing is going to get messed up. If you, know? you if you release something that requires you every two and a half minutes to set your controller down to recalibrate your that's gyroscope, garbage. get out of here. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> that's garbage. Don't do it ever again mm-hmm. because that's a terrible idea. Um, and I think we're going to move on. Real, real quick. Oh, go ahead. Three other ideas I think would be awesome to bring back. Earthbound. Mm. <laughs> if they made a new Earthbound game, I would love sick. to see a new Earthbound game. I think it would be I think it would be awesome with the pad. Yeah. Also, Ice Climbers and Kid Icarus. That's all I'm gonna say. I would, I would say yes to Kid Icarus. Maybe no to Ice yeah, Climbers. Yeah, Ice Climbers. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not, never. But been a huge I, Ice I think fan. I think if they reimagined Ice Climbers and like with new mechanics and stuff, it could be an inter- It could be game. interesting. But Kid Icarus, mm-hmm. yeah, that'd be sweet. I love me some Pit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me and Pit were boys on the uh, Wii Super Smash Bros. Oh yeah. All right. So, uh, we're staying on yeah, video game yeah. consoles. Xbox 360 did a number on Black Friday. Mm. And what was that number, Lucas? 750,000. 750. This console is what? 2006. It's 6 years it's old 2005 now. it came out. 2005. So it's Christmas seven, 2005. So it's 7 years old right now and it just sold 3 quarters of a million consoles on one day. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just your mother, your grandma, everyone's going out and buying 360s. Well, they're down in price. Halo 4 is disgustingly good. It is fun. I played it today, and I'm just yeah. like I played Is really it? well. I yeah. played really well today. Uh, <laughs> and it was my first time picking it up. So it, it, if it would if it if he would have played bad, it would have been Halo Four blows. I hate I, that no, game. but see, like I I actually like even just playing it. Like it looks it looks better than Halo games. It, to be honest, they I, actually yeah, did step it up, and I'm surprised they did. To, I've like toyed with the idea of getting a 360 just to play Halo. Oh, you know that is totally a, Dude, that is totally yeah. a like viable option like, like you definitely it, should like consider it's cheap it. enough i would point. get it to play like gears halo i'm sorry and I'm, i I'm i and fan, the other so. thing that i've heard too is i know that the next xbox won't be out like till later next year they're saying it's they're saying christmas next they're, year yeah they're saying q4 2013 which is the, later than i actually thought and the ps3 know. is looking the ps4 is looking at like q1 of 2014 they're they're skipping oh, so holiday the ps3 season. is or the ps4 is they're gonna skip holiday later. season okay but yeah, no. those are the rumors, though. Because like I've actually never played through Halo two or three, and I kind of want to do that. Halo, those are both really great games. They're fun. Yeah, remember when we played Combat Evolved? Mm-hmm. The that original. Oh, I've, on got, his Xbox. I've got the rematch. I played that Combat on Evolved yeah. on my uh, same here at home for yeah. But we played it. We played the whole first level in a Warthog, like yeah. through all the oh buildings and oh, stuff. Really? Like we would spend like fifteen <laughs> minutes trying to like punch the warthog through a doorway <laughs> and like we'd be throwing grenades at it and like yeah. as the grenade was like blowing up we'd like punch it so it would like jump over the little <laughs> yeah. and we played it all the way to the end yeah. with a warthog it was awesome that was one of those great amazing times and like yeah you know video, video games. games like well and the i think we were at the right CE, age too the multiplayer on ce was great oh yeah yeah, yeah. it was cool like i we could play that oh, all night sorry. long 
Um, but anyways, <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, that was yeah, it. There really isn't too much to the story for me other than I'm just, it's still really surprising they're selling this well. And that's, I, that's insane. For how yeah. everyone in the industry kind of said, oh yeah, the 360 is going to die off because the PS4 has more power and it's going to attract more hardcore uh-huh. gamers. Cause what, but yeah, but guess what? The PS3 has no games. It's got, no, no, it's got no, no. some I good exclusives. I just like, downloaded Dead Space the other day and I've also... Okay, but you know what else you can play Dead Space on? 360. Yeah, 360. That's fine. What about like um, Uncharted? Okay, we got one. Little Big then, Planet. Little Big There's Planet. two. Then we've got four. Killzone. We've got But MGS. you know what? I played the last Killzone game. The last one wasn't that It great. was junk. Yeah. So I'm not going to include Killzone in that. I, I include the original All right, ones. fine. And then, fine, we'll do that. Like, and Metal Gear Plank, Solid. Ratchet they don't make those games anymore. I know. They stopped making them, but they were a lot of fun before. I remember playing those on PS2. So we're going with four games that are still in production. Well, not to mention that my PlayStation 3 can also play Blu-rays. So that's, that's a big, a big thing. thing for me. I mean, I that's half the reason I bought a PS3. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a good reason to buy a PS3, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, if you want to play games, if you're a hardcore gamer, well, why would you not get it? Well, here's the other thing. I, I feel like PS3... The PlayStation Network is not the greatest, but like you it's can free. still get a lot of the indie games. Like yeah. you oh, can right, get right. Fez and you can get Braid now. And, you can get a lot of, the, uh, yeah. you know. And I, I guess well, this is coming from a PC master race, so yeah, I'm about to join that race soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, would, like I'm gonna, I just, I just want everything on the PC. So I feel like I'm going to transform into one of those people. <laughs> you will. Hey, so I see you're playing a console there. You suck. <laughs> Have fun playing on low res. I'm start gonna wipe him, wipe my ass with every console I see. It's you just will. gonna be. Don't uh, do a PS3 controller. Oh, uh, they don't really fit. Okay. Um. Well, X uh, or Microsoft and Xbox made a lot of money, but HP lost yeah. a lot of money. And I don't want to spend a ton of time on this because I, I don't think there's any reason. I to. think it's just was funny. It's like a one line thing. Like S- HP reported that they lost 8.8 billion dollars in an impairment charge due to allegedly like fraudulent accounting from a company they acquired called autonomy and like 8.8 billion dollars that's with a b that's with a b like of like like fraudulent charges due to accounting from this company they acquired that they were basically cooking their books and saying hey we have this much money and they really didn't so it's just like wasn't there someone that came out at google and said hey yeah we looked at them and they weren't worth that much money oh really i think so yeah i don't Uh, even know what autonomy does you know what poor sure Poor HP. I really, I really actually yeah. like to see HP go. I want somewhere. to see like some of the old like mainstream. I want to see a WebOS tablet. Do something. Oh yeah, they've got. Con- I want to see a WebOS tablet. But they they push it open source and those guys quit. Yeah, yeah they're true. all gone. But now. you know what else I want to see? HP makes solid laptops. Like the Envy yeah. series, those are nice they laptops. Are. Yeah. And you know why they're nice laptops? Because they clone MacBooks. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> but they're pretty laptops. They have good specs and they're inexpensive. And actually, I want to make one quick point about cloning MacBooks. I actually think that's not a bad thing. I think more people should do it because I think that things converge after a while. Mm-hmm. And there's a certain yeah. point where like designs like get refined enough where there's like a certain kind of best way to do something. And I think the MacBook Pro actually has a lot of great ideas on about the best way to build a laptop. They have know? the best ideas. Of yeah. You know what I mean? And it, like, so I don't really mind if, you know, good artists copy, great artists steal. Like, you know, I don't really mind if somebody like takes some idea, but here's the thing. HP, take the MacBook pro and make it your own and build on top of that. And, Build which, your but own they, they kind of did though, which they did with the MV. But it wasn't this, as great as a MacBook. <laughs> of course not, but yeah, I mean, but it's Apple puts so much time and attention into their. They things. do. That's Just the look thing. at trackpads. To this date, the best Windows machine oh, I've ever owned. Uh, let me take it back. Best Windows laptop I've ever owned is my MacBook Pro. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I actually like, like that. I like the way you you, you phrase that. It, it's like. I can run Windows every everything Windows on here and it works I had flawlessly. A, I had a friend you know? who had a had an old like first gen MacBook Pro and he was kind of into like Photoshop and Illustrator and things like that at the time and I don't know why I I, I still to this day thinks he smokes crack <laughs> because he would only use Creative Suite on his on his boot camp partition. Oh. I'm like, dude, you have a MacBook Pro. Right. What are you doing? But he that's all he did. That's he had yeah. his Windows partition just to run Creative Suite. That's weird though. Why would 
I would do that the other way around. Right? Yeah. I don't know, well, but that's the, that was his thing, and it ran perfectly on it. I guess the, the distinction is, like, I would, for graphics and everything like that, I would probably, you know, like Photoshop and whatever, I would probably run all Illustrator, do that on the Mac side. Of course. But once I get my Beast PC built, I will probably start transition to video editing on PC. Which you would want you to. You know, because it's just there's all that raw horsepower We there should and, actually probably, like get moving on these topics because yeah oh, this, i know i think this pc build talk is going to be it, it will it'll take one. some time but windows so, 8 let's windows just jump right to windows 8 i guess i'll start off on this one because i yeah you you're the windows the, the in-house windows, windows man tard um but yeah it's uh windows 8 they sold what was it 40 million copies and it's kind of funny because with windows and microsoft they're disappointed when they only sell 40 million copies on the launch of a new product <laughs> which is but, true but uh but yeah, it's nothing too crazy. I think it's this is a new OS where everything before was iterative all the way back to when they first came out the desktop. So uh, mm. no, what? I'd say since Windows ninety five. Okay, Windows well, one, and, yeah. Windows one, whatever it was one between and one three and three. And three okay, five yeah, I I can no, agree four. with that. Okay, yeah. I can agree with that. But even if, like, let's say, even since Windows ninety five, this is the first like major redesign, and I think they're gonna have a lot harder time than what they've been saying, getting people to adopt oh, it and definitely. start using yeah. it. I mean, even look, though I'll be honest, I love using it. Like, it's it works same really here, nice. But, but look at okay, this may be a little like little. I don't know kind of one-sided i guess or mm-hmm. whatever you want to say yeah. but like look at like gabe newell and notch speaking out against windows 8 like mm-hmm. those are two huge like like pc like follow people, people yeah. that people that follow like gaming on a pc those are, i mean those are two people who you look to for advice not yeah. advice but like you look to when they say you something yeah you pay and they, attention and they when and they, they say both, something you listen and they yeah. both denounced windows 8 yeah and it's and what I'm really hoping is, and we'll talk about this during my little segment here on Windows 8 sales, um, I'm hoping that with Sanofsky leaving, they might open up the App Store and like the Windows Store a little bit on Pro devices. Please. I, it's not going to open up on RT, but I completely understand yeah, oh no, it. I that, don't that think it should. I think it sense. should stay that way because on RT, on ARM devices, it's just you don't have the processing power to dink around with having background tasks and right. sloppy coding where on x80 modern x86 machines, there's just so much power there that... Yeah, there's enough power. There's there's plenty of power there. Um, but yeah, and then on to my next little thing here, Surface Pro, $900. Mm-hmm. People freaked out because it didn't come with a keyboard and it was nine hundred dollars i'm just like it's an ultra yeah you know, though, but you know it though, has it has a good screen it comes it with should, a stylus it sh- it should have come with a keyboard the keyboard costs what 30 40 bucks yeah why not that's something that microsoft can afford to throw in because it will vamp up sales yeah yeah that's i mean that was that was a poor decision on microsoft's point. well that's the thing is i guess i i would have been to that i would have been more happy though if they would have just said a th- like nine ninety nine ninety nine comes with a keyboard. Just you pull it out of the box, and it is your laptop, tablet, accessory, awesome. Yeah. Because I don't think there's a huge difference between the eight ninety nine and the nine ninety nine because it's it's already in that ultrabook category. Right. Well, right. You're not you're not gonna be cross shopping this with a i with a new iPad. It's just it's not it's well, right. But it's a but step up and above. But but that's also why they should have included the keyboard. Yeah, exactly. Because because you're not you're not sitting there and comparing it to an iPad. And I will because, agree with that. Yeah. Because essentially, like everyone that is going to buy a Surface Pro is going to buy the laptop accessory, mm-hmm. you could buy the the key, one of the two keyboard accessories. So so maybe they should have had an option where you could get the the one of the two different keyboards, and maybe one costs. Nine twenty nine ninety nine, yeah. and the other cost nine forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and they definitely could have, but it's, I'm, okay. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. But I still well, don't think the pricing is too in. Like, oh, it's I not insane. No, it's not insane at all. I think it's actually priced really well. Well, and, yeah. and that's and that's the funny thing because it's like it can do everything a normal Windows laptop. Right. It's yeah. a, it's a computer. You know, and like we, were, I was talking with some coworkers at lunch about this today, and it was like, oh, some see. people were saying like, oh, you know, it's too expensive and this and that, and it's like. But then at the same time, a few of us have like, you know, MacBook Airs and stuff, which are like right. seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars It's like, yeah, if you look at this thing as a tablet, 
it's not that, a tablet though. It, it, no, but what I'm saying is, if, if you, you, look, at if you look at if you look at this at the Surface Pro as a tablet, yeah, it's an expensive tablet, but that's not the way to look at yeah, it. Yeah, because it's it's because it's not. It's it's a really a PC. It's a it's a know? touch screen PC. Like, okay, because then if if someone's gonna make the argument that the Surface Pro is a tablet, then you have to say every all in one desktop is a tablet. Kind of. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's that's a little I, bit iffy. But I mean, you know. it's it's a tablet that you need to have plugged in. I because I, because that's that's their only argument is that there's no keyboard. I would have I would call it a PC and a tablet form factor. You know what well, I'm right. saying? Well, right. Well, I mean, that, that's what it is. But like, yeah. But like that argument that saying the Surface Pro is a tablet just because it doesn't have a keyboard. Well, you can use a t- you can use an all-in-one PC. Right. Like a touch, like an HPC Touch Smart Pro. Right. That's a that in that argument, it's essentially just a tablet because right. you don't but, need a keyboard and mouse for it. Right. But with a battery life of only four hours, God, that's just. Do you need to on. plug it in? See, come on. I'm sorry. This is my really terrible. Com- I. Do, now, it doesn't it, surprise well, here, here, me at does all. It, does one of the keyboards have an external battery? No. What? No. It's the same keyboards hey, as with the RT. Microsoft, take some notes from ASUS and learn about tablet keyboards. It doesn't mean that I. I think other manufacturers might come out with a keyboard i wouldn't be surprised but they're gonna be they're gonna be microsoft's gonna make them expensive yeah no but but no if they're gonna come out with other keyboards other than the microsoft ones no microsoft is going to make those manufacturers make them expensive oh because Mm. they want they want people to buy their i'm kind of helpful i don't think microsoft will because they're trying to build an ecosystem with this not control one look at but i guess i that makes sense let me put this in let me put this in perspective once again if you look at this thing as a tablet, yeah, four hours is not that great. It's terrible. The but Surface if you look Pro as... or the the Surface RT is eight or something. Yeah, yeah. Surface RT is eight. It's actually decent. But um, the thing is, uh, four hours is about what I would get on my MacBook Pro, probably. You know, if I just left it off the charger, it would just pro- it would probably last a little over four hours. And so if you look at this thing as strictly a tablet, yeah, it's not the, got the greatest battery life for a tablet. But if you look at it in terms of like it's a PC in your hands, that's not terrible. I right. do and, and I don't and have a problem the, with it. But at the same time, okay, look at the, the form factor. I, I'm agreeing with you here. Yeah. Look at the form factor of the Surface Pro compared to my laptop. Yeah. You can't fit a nine-cell battery like I have in my right. laptop in – essentially the screen of my laptop right mm-hmm. and it's not that much thicker than the rt no. it's only it's a what, matter of millimeters, millimeters yeah like a couple millimeters thicker yeah. and that's it so really there's nothing to complain about because yeah. if if you if you had that eight hour battery life in the surface pro guess what yeah it'd be a brick and yeah, you complain about how big it is right it'd be huge. so you have to learn to people have to learn to like accept things <laughs> because if they don't then they're going to complain about something else. Like it's yeah. it's a give and take type thing. Right. But yeah, I don't know. It's um I'll be honest, I'm probably gonna get this. I was torn in between this and the yoga. And oh, I, I would get the yoga. I like the yoga, but it's I don't like have I that grabbing the keyboard would bother me so much. See, that I would also agree with. I kind of but the other okay. The the counter argument to that is because I used to own a Toshiba hybrid laptop yeah, tablet, yep. and that swivel hinge that they use broke, like like oh, yeah. after half a year of use, it broke. I believe that. And so there's there's no good way around that. Well, your two options are really either what Dell's doing with their swivel, which it looks kind of dinky right now. I don't like the way it looks, but I think that I think that design could work if they design it a little bit better. Is that the one like, where it flips around? Yeah, it I flips have, around. I have actually a pretty good design idea. Go ahead and finish yours, and then I'll. But what I was just yeah, yeah, what I was ahead. just saying is like I think that that design idea is decent, but if you had a little bit higher quality designers and better engineering behind it, other because like. Dell just the market they're in right now. They really could care less about the consumer market because they're trying to sell the business. They are because they know Dell that is like Dell has gone crazy on the they have market. and it's it's smart on their part where HP is kind of like I don't know what I want to do. I'm with Lilo Pop. We're just gonna be throw eight point eight billion dollars away. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's and uh, I think it'd be a good design. They just they would have to work on it a little bit more because right, so it's different. And I have I have actually sturdy. A, a good idea that may work better so my old toshiba hybrid laptop thing had one hinge in the middle Mm -hmm. that swiveled 
All right. Lenovo still makes a lot of those yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Now get this. So a lot of laptops have two hinges, like mine and Lucas do here. Yours is a yours is a piano hinge, right? Yeah. Or similar I to a piano you, hinge. Yeah, yeah. You could call it that. Yeah. So it's got two hinges. You flip it over on its on its bottom side, and there's like a like a, a like a lock. Mm-hmm. on one of the two hinges yeah you unlock that and then the other one is a swivel oh. so you spin it around flip it over i see and then you just put that lock back on okay do you want to know what i would like you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah i get what you're talking yeah. about yeah i think that's is, i think that's a good idea because then it preserves it it's not utilizing that swivel function every time you open and close your laptop right you know? The thing yeah, is, that makes sense. I don't think people would like having to play with the latch, which is really trivial. People are tri- really trivial. I, know, <laughs> but I hate. You. I just <laughs> thought of an idea, which I just because I like mechanical things and like clicking and everything. Magnets. Oh, I just made more god dang surface puns, but magnets. Yes, no magnets. Ma- but wait, no. how do they work? How do they work? <laughs> Go listen to like, ICP right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, please listen to the rest of our podcast. But then listen to ICP. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> But what if you like had it to where you lifted the screen up just a little bit, and then you had a dual oh. hinge to where you came and you just slid it back over the Ooh. keyboard? Ooh, that would be kind of cool. I like what you're. I like what you're throwing you at us right have, now. You just have. Then it covers the keyboard. You're not touching it anymore. You cover it. It would lock. Then it would lock in the clips at the bottom. So I like, it would just lock right I like, over the top of the keyboard. I like what you're throwing at us right now. That'd be pretty sweet. I think it'd be kind of sweet hey, because you, like, you know what? You could leave HP, it open for being able to see the stuff or you could close it up. Whatever. HP, Dell, Asus. Uh, call me, maybe. Call us. Um, we'll work for your engineering team. <laughs> Gladly. I'm getting a degree in this, so please. Yeah, me there too. You go. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, oh, wait. Finish, yeah, finish your thought. I was just going to continue on. I guess, what do you got? Oh, we got, oh well, I was just going to say, we've got two more topics. iTunes 11 and so many well, 4K TVs. Let's, but, let's talk about Windows yearly updates quick. Okay, yes. Because I but, like this. But before we go finish with that, I think I was going to propose that we save those two topics for after hours because we can just sure. talk about those later. Yeah, sure, yeah that's fine. Time. Yeah. So, yeah, all right, let's continue on Windows 8 real quick. Um, so. Yeah, it's uh, Windows, they're... This is all rumor mill stuff still, but I, I ha- we're thinking about probably yearly updates with the, kind of like what we're continuing on here. Yeah, right kind there. of like OS X, which, which yeah, is exactly. Good. And I think it's a good thing, but I actually heard one really good argument because I was listening. I listen to Windows Weekly every week because, like I said, I'm the Windows nut here. <laughs> um, I do like Windows Weekly though; it's a good podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's really. Paul Throt's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. but um, it's what they were saying is that what are corporations going to do with this? Are like, is Microsoft going to build in a good way to stop these updates? Because your big business is not going to want to dink around with updates every year. Yeah. Like, they like sticking with something for five years and then just all of a sudden jumping. Well, but you know what, though? I can see Microsoft going in a, going about this. You're talking, like, enterprise, Yeah, right? exactly. Going about this a different way with enterprise. Where? You buy an enterprise license. And you pay, if they do yearly updates, you just, you know, link a, a company credit card, bank account, whatever, with Microsoft. And yeah. Black. And then, basically, they just set it up just for enterprise, where overnight, your computers just self-update, your system just self-update, and it's done. And you just pay that, what, $15, $30 nominal fee yeah. when the updates comes out, and then they just... Do it themselves, and you but don't I, need to sit there and and have your IT and guys deploy like, it yeah. yourself. Yeah. My problem with this though is like I think Ryan's gonna know the most yeah. about this because he's working in the I environment. Work in but IT. I don't <laughs> think because I think there's more on the side of just what they're working with, and like it's more with you install a new update and it breaks an old program that you've been using for ten years yeah. or it's just see, legacy but things. But see, like, but but here's the thing about that though is. When you're when you're doing yearly updates like that, it's like updating from Android 4.1 to Android 4.1.2. It's you're not it's changing not you're not changing the basic infrastructure of the of the software. You're you're it's like bug fixes. It's not crazy, which and, occasionally break things. Uh, I I think I don't think it's a crazy concept to think that corporations could get into that kind of rhythm of and, doing that. But but the thing is, I don't think they'll do it right day in day and day of of a new update i'm thinking it'll be like two to three months later 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, because they now, do we think that they're gearing this towards enterprise or they're gearing this towards consumers? Because this is, what they're is, doing right here is towards consumers, I think. Right. Absolutely. So, so enterprise doesn't have to update. Look at look at all the. There's still systems that run on XP. Shh. <laughs> 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 My comp- the company I work for, <laughs> the company I work for still has their point of sale system on Windows 2000. I'm not even joking. Yeah, it's I, such bullshit. I I believe that. I believe that. But it doesn't work. That's a problem. Oh, it's broken. I'm saving oh. all my swear words for the after hours. See, tune in. Um, I save them for all day. See, I I don't think it's entirely like. Like you, like you said, it won't be huge updates with e- this yearly thing now, because Windows has like you know historically been when a new one comes out, it's a drastic change. There's lots of new stuff. Right. But you're right. When it gets on this yearly cycle, it's not going to be that crazy enough of an upgrade. But I still think enterprises will lag behind. Two. Mm-hmm. Three, but there's four, but there's nothing wrong months. with that. There's nothing wrong. With no, that. no, no. That's there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying it won't. I don't think it's. First of all, there will be certain enterprises that will just not have it and right. won't go for it right. at all. There will be some that will be like, yeah, we want to fall into lockstep with Microsoft. Um, but, I mean, we still want the chance of getting the things in our hands and putting it in our test environments right. first to make sure it doesn't break any of our enterprise applications. Exactly. And then once they do that testing, you know, two, three, four, five months down the road, yeah. But I, but I also think that, like... You know, I love Microsoft as a company, which yeah. sounds terrible, but I love Microsoft as a company. Yeah, and I do think, a good job. And I think that they would be really willing to work with some of these enterprise companies and say, hey, we're going to release a new update in a month. Give this to your IT guys. Because, th- I mean, that's what MSDN is about. Right. That's, it's about these developers that work for these companies, these IT guys that work for these companies, to jump on the developer preview of Windows 8 before, you know, months before it comes out. Right. And test it and make sure things work with it. Yeah. Like, like that's already implemented. That's been implemented forever. Right. So, like, this is totally a viable thing that, that Microsoft could implement. And it, and, it, and it would make sense for both consumer and enterprise world. It's a viable thing. And it's funny because, like... MSDN has all this stuff out there, you know, there's Visual mm-hmm. Studio 2012 and yeah. SharePoint 2013 and Windows 8 and all this stuff available to everybody in enterprise that works in IT that has an MSDN license to go and test this stuff. But how many enterprises actually go and like are proactive about that and getting on that? Well, that's, stuff? I mean, but that's not Microsoft's I mean, fault. No, it's not. But I'm just saying that's kind of a culture change, you know, yeah, that's yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. Microsoft kind of needs to help, you know, take these corporations by the hand and say, Hey, we're going to guide you through this and try See, to help you and, get and, to this okay, new so, kind of model. So here's the, th- here's the problem with the MSDN. Yeah. Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think that, that was going to come was out. Adorable. As, I didn't think that was going to come out as loud as it did. Uh, I was trying to suppress it a little more, but, but here's the thing about MSDN. The problem with it is they have like the MSDN like school or whatever, where yeah. you can like do your training programs, things like that, but they don't advertise it enough. Like when you log oh, sure. into your, when you log into your MSDN account, you don't see any of that. You just see, here's some software you can download, and here's some expansions for your software you can download. Sure. Yeah. Like, that's all it is. So, what they need to do is a, and oh boy, have you ever been to like the MSDN training section? Oh, yeah. It is. I've been it is. Often. Yeah. It's like years in the past. Oh, yeah. It's like updated because that's yeah. such a good resource. And I mean, people are on it every day. Yeah. It's like updated it because it's a really good resource. And. It's something that everyone should use. Right, right. So, I don't know. I guess what I'm getting at is I think that enterprise and consumers can really appreciate this yearly update system. That, right. Because there's, there's, some, there's some things that are, like, bad in Windows 7, which I thought I would never no, say. No, no, no. I, I think there are, too. But, it's so, it, but it's something like I keep my desktop. I will never switch my desktop to Windows 8. And I would love to have my desktop running Windows 7 – but I would love, you know, in 12 months from me installing it, saying, hey, here's some bug fixes and we've improved some things. Yeah. Down there install it, it for $15. I'd pay that $15 all day, every day. And, I want my cake for free. I'll, I'll jump over to the other side to be the devil's advocate of that real quick. When I first bought my MacBook Pro with OS 10 10.6 on it, yeah. it was 
rock solid. Like I had, z- right. I literally had zero problems with it while I was on 10.6. The minute I upgraded to 10.7, it was issues up the wazoo. I had so many things crash on me and the thing, my computer would just randomly just have to just shut down. Um, it was bad until I got like a couple updates into 10.7 and then I got to um, 10.8 finally. So, oh, okay. But uh, see, like it can work. It, that model can work, but like if it's anything like what Apple's has been, stuff kind of tends to break. You which know. yeah which I, you know i've seen but i think that like windows can make it a minimal enough update yeah if they yeah i agree if they can do a good job of just saying like hey we're we're fixing bugs we're doing ui improvements because okay here's you know, here's the problem with surface level you know stuff. what windows update does this but you know what windows update is junk <laughs> i want them to get rid of it well the i way, hate windows the way update. i hate the way it's implemented it's yeah. terrible it's okay, terrible. I have an issue here where if Apple can't do it with the smaller group of like people, and that's the thing is like the Apple base would should be a you you would think would be a lot better with their thing than what right. the Windows base is. I right. think that the entire Windows PC base, since it's so large and so diverse with so many different chunks of hardware and co- graphics cards and everything, so different and people different people using different things yes. on it, yeah. It's going to be really difficult, I think, for them to get everything tested out because there's just so, there's so many variations in that ecosystem compared to, like, if Apple had a hard that's time actually, upgrade, upgrading their MacBook Pros. That's a really good point. You bring up a really good point. Like, if they're having just, a hard – and Apple is a great company design-wise. Like, you would – Don't – No, I'm going to say Aaron right Drink, now. I'm <laughs> correcting you. Don't say design-wise. Say in terms of design or regards to design. <laughs> Design wise, ah, Aaron drink, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like they build some great computers. I strongly disagree with a lot of their business practices. I disagree uh. with some certain. I, I I'm not a fan of iOS or OS X or iOS for I, that matter. But I don't. You know what? I, like I still OS think, X, but I hate iOS. I still think that they have some very talented people there. They design some good software for a lot of people, and they design some solid, solid, solid hardware. And they're bringing things to the market that, for some reason, the PC makers refuse to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a problem, and I'm going to use a word I hate, but there's a real problem with fragmentation in terms of uh, like Windows. Yeah. There's a real problem with fragmentation, and again, I hate that word, but that's the best way to it's describe it. It's a problem it. and a benefit, yeah. though. Which is which is true, but when it comes to what we're talking about here, in terms of hardware, that in it terms runs of on. well, in terms of updating software and making oh. sure that hardware doesn't break, yeah, fragmentation is a total problem, yeah. and that's and that's why it takes so long to roll out Android updates. Yep. But we're not Android isn't mucking it up like. Apple is by never really updating their their software by right. just making this stale old product. But I'm not well, getting into that, so I I'll just yeah. say real quick that on the Apple side uh on OS 10, I think 10.6 will go down as being the last great version of OS 10. I I I would agree with uh, that. I definitely and, agree and with that. And it's kind of you know those people you run into on the Windows side and they're just like, "Oh yeah, Windows 98 that was freaking awesome like i can i, I can, it. I oh, can nev- yeah i can rock you know, windows 98 but you know what i'm talking about like yeah. like they're like oh that was the last great version of windows no I think, no 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 no. but I, you've met those people those though. people are douches <laughs> <laughs> but i'm saying i'm gonna be that douche in like 10 years from now in terms of OS 10. Uh, oh, i'm gonna, but, but see, I'm gonna like, be like 10.6 gosh darn it that okay, was the best but, version of os 10 but, there ever was okay but look at it this way because <laughs> windows xp is the best version of windows and anyone who says different is an idiot wait windows xp yes windows xp is far better than windows 7 and the reason why is because windows 7 is based on windows xp Oh, well, of course it is, but it has a lot of UI. In I don't care. I, I think I'm not, Windows 7 okay, is better than XP. I, you know what? Like, visually, aesthetically, Windows 7 is a lot better, but Windows XP was just like the – it was a rock. One it, was thing, a, it was Plymouth Rock. I would say one thing functionally on Windows 7, though, the snap. Uh, Windows snap, snap is the killer feature sure, of 7. Sure, sure, sure. But I, I consider that more of an aesthetic – because because there are, there are there is software on Windows XP that you can implement. Oh, yeah, let's do this but... janky way of getting Snap to work you know on what, my though? XP machine. Windows XP is is rock solid. But, 
Windows 7 is <sighs> no. pretty rock solid. It's, it's close, but it's not Windows XP. <sighs> Windows XP is not ideal. Okay, what did Windows XP emerge from? Windows uh, CE. Really? CE? Which is what Windows Phone 7 ran on. <laughs> yeah. CE oh. would have been 2002, okay. right? Okay. It's the base kernel for like everything Microsoft for the last like 10 years. And it was a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Yeah, but it was a solid kernel. I would I would challenge you with say Windows 2000? No, no, no. I would say compare the like hooking up to Wi-Fi on Windows XP as opposed but, to Windows 7. But now hold on though, because you're talking about different wireless standards. You're talking about totally like I'm talking about at the time like, I'm talking about the whole experience of just getting on a Wi-Fi connection with a Windows XP. Oh, but no, but no, Wi-Fi no. standards were different when Windows XP That's was relevant, true. and as they are when as Windows Seven is relevant. True. Like like it was it was fine when Windows XP was out because that they were up to standard. I didn't have you have to, when XP yeah. was out. You so. you have to you have to look at it. It ha- you have to look at it as being relevant it, to the time. Into the, in the so, time. So, because okay. like what I'm saying is like so, when you're older, you're going to say OS X 10.6 is the most amazing thing. But then someone can say, well, it connects to Wi-Fi better. This new one connects to Wi-Fi better than 10.6 sure. did. But that's because there's different standards. I guess I'll say at kind the time of. I used Windows XP, I was not as happy with it as the time I am right now when I use Windows 7 because I am... I, I, I just am in such pure joy when I get to use Windows 7. Oh, I love... Like, I, seriously. You, I, like, you have no idea how much <laughs> I love Windows 7, but I just... Like, XP is still relevant. Yeah, but I don't get that warm, fuzzy feeling when I'm using it again. I do. Oh, God, no, I don't. No, I get I, it. I, I, I'm like, get me out of here. I get a, I get a yes. PC boner when I wrote boot up I, I think the, I think the, the taskbar in... Oh, it's no, ugly. It it's looks ugly like as balls. freaking... Fisher Price. It's ugly like, as balls. It looks like a, <laughs> but like I said, toy. like I said, aesthetically it's not good at all. Yeah. But I don't really. I mean, aesthetics are usually an important thing to me. But when I'm looking at just the core of an operating system, I think Windows XP is pretty good. I think we should continue this conversation yeah, really in should. after hours. I will. I, I will agree with you, agree with you for one thing about Windows XP. And well, and that that was such a solid gaming platform oh. to run games on. Everything it, just worked. You know, hardware was optimized because you're looking at three service packs. We yeah. are still on service pack one for Windows Seven. Yeah, although Windows Seven basically is Vista with better enhancements. Windows X, Windows XP with better enhancements. Yeah, they based okay. Windows Seven off Windows XP because they knew Vista was bad. No, 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 no. no they no, took no, Windows no. Vista, Vista was off XP. XP with. They're all based on the same curl. If you kernel, want to think of terms of like service packs greatly. after three and for XP, Vista was service pack four. No, original Vista. it was like it no, was no, like. Hang on, <laughs> hang on, and then there was two service packs for Vista. That was five and six, and then Vista seven was finally service pack seven. That's probably where they got the name. Oh, oh. we just figured it out. <laughs> hey, F you, Microsoft. <laughs> we broke the code. They're gonna make a national treasure uh. movie based on us. Who is Nicolas Cage going to play? Uh, he's going to play um, uh, Cole. No, no, no. no, no. Who is he going to play uh, out of the three of us? Because they're oh, making a oh, national oh, treasure oh. movie on us. Uh, I, I don't want Nick Cage to be me. I'll have Nick Cage be me. Uh, I'll be the dude that's like kind of nerdy and stuff. And like, but but who? What actor would would the, play the, you? What's what's the guy that's? Uh, oh wait, no, 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 no. I can't remember. Oh, no, let's no, no. let's all pick actors that would play us in the National Treasure movie. How we Jeez. find out why Windows Seven is called I Windows think, Seven? <laughs> whatever, whatever the guy is, it's like a sidekick that's like kind of nerdy and stuff in that movie. You know, I don't know that. I don't know. I've seen name. that. Let's just pick an actor, but pick an actor that would uh, play you. Okay, in this just movie. an actor. Any actor. Uh, my actor would be um, Ryan Gosling. Okay, Ryan Gosling. I give you Ryan Gosling. Okay, you got the you got the hair. I got the hair, I guess. And you got the, the blonde hair. Yeah. And your name's Ryan. Yep. That's all you need, I yeah. guess. He just needs to grow a little goatee action. Yeah, he'll do it. Lucas, who's going to play you? Just Jessica some... Elba. No, it can't be a chick. <laughs> it's got to be a homeless dude. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. I do look like a what homeless dude right What you're wearing right, right now, now and, yeah. your, and your beard is Fine. definitely a homeless um, dude. I'm just thinking of Galifianakis when he's just stoned, hammered off his ass. and Okay. Yeah, like doing a stand-up and he's just like, guys, I don't even know the joke, but yeah. 
just pass. <laughs> well, you could do like the Zach Galifianakis joke where he's like, this is what a five-year-old with a beard would sound like. My beard hurts. My <laughs> beard hurts, mom. Um, who would play me? Hmm. I thought you were Nick Cage. I don't want Nick Cage. <laughs> That's right. That. That's what no. it was first got to me. I was like, I don't want to be Nick Cage. I really don't want to be. Maybe uh, Paul Rudd. I can go. see Paul Rudd okay. playing as me. Yeah, that's, yeah I can see Paul Rudd. Cool. All right. So that's when National okay, Treasure 3 so, comes out. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, yeah, break and, yeah. and we're going to have a special topic coming up next. So see you guys. We're going to jump into our PC build segment here. So as you all know, based on our discussion in the opening today, I am looking to build a PC in the not too distant future. So what I decided to do was put together a build of the kind of PC I was looking at. I kind of didn't really hold back. I was just like, well, if I want this certain, you know, amount of hard drive space in this hard drive, I'm going to get it and put it in my build. And if I want this certain amount of RAM, I'm going to get it and put it in my build. And if I want this certain processor, I'm going to get it and put it in my build. Didn't really pay attention to price. Just kind of said, hey, I'm going to make one and then decide from there where to peel back on and hopefully try to save some money on certain parts. And additionally, when I told Nick and Lucas about this, they decided that they were going to go ahead and make some suggested builds for me as well and hopefully comment on the build that I make and uh, guide me along in this first time PC virgin building process. uh, (laughs) I got really excited for this. So same here. So yeah, so that's where I'm at. So I'm going to log into new egg here because I forgot to do that as I was talking about this. So let me do that real quick. New egg.com in case you don't know, they're not sponsoring us, but that'd be great if they would. It's your one-stop shop for all your PC needs. Yes, new. And I have, <laughs> and, and I should I should say here that I have yeah, a service. I, want to look at this site. I have a service that I'm going to introduce to you that you may not use Newegg solely for your PC purchasing needs. Ooh, okay. So, all right, I'm looking at my build right now. And Well, I guess first of all, I'll a little backstory. I've been wanting to build a PC for a very long time. As I mentioned earlier, I've di- I've dove into dive dove Dope. into PCs before to like change parts out and stuff, change sound cards, video cards, RAM, whatever, but I've never built one from scratch before. And I know for a fact that you can build a PC of your dreams for much cheaper than you could buy it just pre-built yourself cuz a lot of the cost that goes into a pc is the labor to make Mm -hmm. it so in many cases yeah yeah so i decided to pursue this venture and i made a build for myself on newegg and my first part of the build and probably the most i guess basic thing to look at first is the case so i selected a cooler master uh i don't know if you guys have heard of that brand yeah yeah um yep it's called Advanced Blue Edition, full tower case with USB 3.0 and a bunch of bunch of stuff. It's a long title. Uh, it's $180, so I don't know if that's more or less than I should be spending on a case. Um, it's, it's it's high end. It's a nice. It's a case. high end price. Okay. Yeah. That's the thing is with a case though, you want to pay like it's one of those things where I would pay the extra money just to get like a really nice case because with my PC. I am constantly upgrading, adding, and like if you buy a really nice case, it will make your future life so much you'll, easier. Yeah. You'll stick with it for a while. Probably. Yeah, like which I regretfully did not choose a nice case. The I case, my computer. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. case is like that one thing that will never like it could, I guess, go obsolete, but they're not, not really, really no. they're not, not changing really. motherboard no, sizes. No. You'll never really need to upgrade. Exactly. It. Yeah. If you buy a nice case from the beginning with tons of airflow. And all your ports you want. It's I guess the only gripe you could have is maybe it doesn't have USB 4.0, but you can always do an add-in card out the back to where. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so continue on. Okay, continuing on for the motherboard, I picked an Asus Maximus V Extreme LGA, Intel Z77, blah blah blah, HDMI, oh, SATA, six gig gigabits per second, USB 3.0, all Intel the, all motherboard. the jazz. 
uh, lots of stuff going on with this motherboard. But the price point for this guy is uh, a little bit up there. Oh, actually, it went down since last time I looked at it. Three seventy. Oh, okay. So I don't know if that's more or less. Than um, I should pay for that it. is the, an expensive the one, board. But the one I chose is one hundred twenty dollars. Oh wow. Okay. It's I I actually have never bought a board for more than one hundred and fifty dollars. Is it eleven LGA eleven fifty five? Is that what you said? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. The one I the one I chose for my Intel build is is one hundred twenty dollars. Okay. Um, and it's by a respectable. But brand. one okay. really nice thing about which we'll probably get into this later was Z seventy seven, and I'm not sure if they brag about it very much anymore, but like Z seventy seven and Z sixty eight, I believe it's Intel has this option where that you can actually use your ssd as a cache instead of actually like storing everything on it like you can pair it with like even a 30 gig ssd and it sets that up it like intel has automatic software that like stores your most used items on there like your os and whatnot so you can have a smaller ssd but the thing is now with ssds getting cheaper and cheaper yeah you might as well just buy a big one yeah, it's you can buy a fairly nice sized one for not too much, okay. but it's that, that's one nice feature. That is Intel's kind of top of the line chipset right now, though. So that so that's a feature that comes on their top of the line chipset. That sets. that comes on Z seventy seven. It I'm not sure if it comes on all their top of the line ones, but I know that is one that I had heard of before. But I, I never used it because I don't have a that setup right now. But if I were to get a bigger SSD. I wouldn't necessarily you need wouldn't necessarily to worry about it. Yeah. Right. feature so much. It's it's not something you really need to worry about. Okay. And a lot of guys would probably disagree with me and say it's a feature that nowadays isn't too important. But it is something to think about because I guess for our listeners, like let's say we have somebody out there that's building a, fair, a lot, like a lot cheaper build than what we're going to be looking at. It's like a six hundred dollar build, yeah. like a sub eight hundred dollar build. You you right. could you could set that up and then just throw like an i three or even like a low end i five quad core on there, and it, it would still be a great gaming machine, and you could get away with using a lot cheaper and smaller SSD, right? And be able to get some very fast speeds, and it's just, it's just a nice thing that's bundled into it because a, a motherboard's another one of those items where if you spend the extra money, and with Intel they kind of are evil about this and change their sockets every two years but Ooh. yeah it <laughs> frustrates me but on the motherboard it's so yeah on the motherboard yeah. it's they've been known to do this because <laughs> they have their tiktok cycle and oh, tiktok have, yeah, yeah i've heard of this yeah and they're just finishing up their talk oh so coming in the spring we'll talk about this is another thing so the, the talk is coming in coming the in the spring they're going to be switching to i think lga 1150 mm-hmm. i don't really know it's more rumor stuff but yeah and it's kind of frustrating mm-hmm. so nick will probably talk about this with his build but i guess keep no nah, i won't well this one says lga 1155 yeah yeah, yeah. yep but that, that the, lga the 1150 socket. is like the next gen that's the next uh, gen. it counts yeah. down in numbers no it's just it's the number of pins yeah oh like interesting their previous generation was lga 1156 that's what my yeah. computer at home is and their higher version is lga 2011 like okay. it's just that's just the number of pins and that's how they set up their routing of all the different right how, all your pci lanes your memory your everything so okay i'm learning tons of stuff this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like yeah it's like literally those things you never you never need to even think about once until you kind of dive into this process and you're just like, oh, whoa. It's really overwhelming. You know, yeah. That's why yeah. this That's why this. This service that I'm going to tell you about is like amazing. Okay, cool. For yeah. the first time builder. And I, I mean, I consider myself a pretty geeky person. So like when I hear this stuff, I can just kind of absorb it and just be like, okay, yeah. But it like makes for, sense, yeah. But for like, you know, you know, more, more, I guess, average person that doesn't do this kind of stuff or doesn't deal with this every day, they, I can see why they, where they'd just be like, oh my God. Even like, like even do? with me I'm who's, who's built a computer and yeah. things like that before, like this service that I'm going to talk about is just like, it's, it's great because it makes sure that you don't commit any errors. Okay. That's nice. I'm going to look at that. All right, so I'm going to mark the motherboard as a place I could potentially save some money on. Right, and find a cheaper, yeah, yeah, yeah. cheaper one. All right, so the next thing, and we'll probably spend a bit of time on this, um, the video card. So the video card is a very important part of the PC build. Especially um, if you're playing games and editing. Play, and Which I'm probably going to be doing both. So the one I picked, by the way, the way I went through most of these parts was I would look for something to add to the build. And I would just go to Newegg. I would say, show me the video cards for desktops. 
show like sort them by highest rating and i would look at the highest rated mm-hmm. ones and i would find one that's not like you know obscenely yeah, like expensive six hundred dollars like, like or a thousand dollars even yeah. for some well those are like those are like work no, those are ridiculous those are like professional those are like workstation cards right, right. you're looking at like a six or eight gig card like that's just insane. Right. The five thousand dollar workstation yeah, card. Right. Anyway. Yeah. So I would look for the highest rated one that wasn't like absurd, yeah. you know, like out of this world expensive. So the one I kind of landed on um is a two gigabyte and two hundred fifty six bit GDD R five PCI Express uh GTX six eighty. Mm-hmm. Good card. Mm-hmm. Great card. And that one's four seventy right now. Yep. And Though the price is high, I kind of, in terms of things I wouldn't want to skip on, I think the card might be it's one very, that I don't great really card. like want to hold back on. I don't know, like, what are you guys' thoughts on cards? Like, in terms of like, that is something yeah. you want to spend. Sport. Your processor and your card, your video card, are yeah. like the two things that you want to sink good money into. Mm-hmm. Okay. And honestly, I actually think that the graphics card is going to be the single most important thing in your system for what your how games are going to play because like right, even yeah. with a processor right. I'm running an older I'm running like a couple generation old processor at home but I've got a yeah. really nice graphics card and right. it plays all my games and they look beautiful like yeah. and yes it's where you start seeing the CPU come out more I think is in a lot of your very heavily like really working like programs on your computer right like your video editing, what you, yeah, you're yeah. seeing I mean, the yeah. processor there. That is where right. it's important. But in games, they are almost all GPU bound now because it's, it's it's like real time. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you, there's a lot of physics involved. Yeah, yeah. your processor isn't going to handle that physics as much as your graphics card is. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So, so what else we got? And I, I guess one thing I should know before I move on. Another thing I think of, I'm making my PC decision independent of any like monitors that i'm choosing or yeah. peripherals yep. that i'm getting like the where it will probably wind up first when i buy it is just next to my my television in my living room just hooked up to that okay. until like a later date next year sometime when i probably go out and purchase a monitor okay sort, and so. i talked about this a little bit in the car yeah in the car actually yeah. but yeah. um like with that 680 it has a little bit that to it the when you said two hundred and eighty four bit, that is the basically like I guess let's call it the number of lanes. It's yeah. the width of the of the PC. Two hundred fifty six bit. That is yeah. basically where all your memory is coming in. The GDR five is your your the style graphics of processing the gra- memory. It's, yeah. it's the memory that's in the process okay. that's in the graphics card. But um for like the NVIDIA actually I believe right now it it is it in the seventy nine seventy keep trading off fastest cards. But I think the 680 right now is the fastest card, but the 7, 7970 has a wider bus on the memory. Okay. It's actually 384 bits, so it's a little bit nicer for yeah. higher resolutions. What? Uh, I have a question here. What manufacturer is your graphics card that you've chosen? Uh, it says EVGA. EVGA? Okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's a nice brand. That's what that's, I've got, yeah. A lot of like your graphics card's decision comes on how good the manufacturer is at RMAing something. RMA. Yeah, like, like returning. Return like oh. let's say you get like, a card oh, and it fries. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, the pop, like yeah, like an EVGA is in terms of and like Nvidia graphics cards. EVGA is the way to go. Okay. If you're not like you're gonna buy if you buy an Nvidia card, it's great, but it's more expensive. Yeah. And they have a good RMA program, but EVGA has an amazing RMA program, and okay. you spend a little bit less, but you're getting the same card. That's cool. Well, the thing is, is like. With graphics cards, you see, there's a lot of variation, and you'll I've always, see yeah, twenty to thirty dollar difference. I've always a lot found of times that that's all. I've always service. found that weird when it comes to graphics cards that you have like Nvidia and AMD, but then you have like Sapphire and you have Diamond and well, you the have thing is, like EVGA. And, I've never understood that. Like, so basically, do these other manufacturers just they license, make the same exact card? They license yeah. the technology yep. to build the same card, right? right. Okay, and then. And it's kind of cool, actually, because yeah. it's like because then it, and then then it creates a competitive pricing. Yeah. Because you could buy, I don't know. I mean, I, the two main companies that I know that make NVIDIA video cards are like EVGA and NVIDIA, and Asus makes cards too. But like, okay, in uh, AMD in the AMD world, you have like Diamond, Sapphire, you have MSI, mm-hmm. and it's like all these companies make the same exact card 
but they're competitively priced. Mm-hmm. So okay. you can sit there and buy a really nice card that's the same exact one for, you know, 300 and $325 as opposed to like $400. Yeah. Okay. Just because that's just cool. because some other company managed to make it cheaper. That's really cool. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's but it's still kind of weird. Yeah, like it's Nick weird, saying, but it's nice because it's competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like I I would really compare it to how ARM does all their processor work and how they earn their money is like Nvidia and uh, AMD or formerly ATI, they design the graphics no. card. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. And then yeah, because AMD bought ATI two thousand six. Yeah, I think yeah, but and they, they, they design and then they, and then they shut them down like two years ago. Yeah, they they build a reference design for the card and then yeah. they 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 license it out to people and actually Intel licenses x86 to AMD. But, AMD, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's um so that's that's kind of how that works and it is really nice because it creates an ecosystem. It creates they compete. You see the overclocked version, all the different overclocked versions and the standard versions and the versions with like five million fans on it and it's fun. All right. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna keep, keep moving going. on. Yeah, yeah, we gotta, we so, gotta like. Yeah, yeah, along. I know. Yeah. I get excited. So, uh, this one's simple: power supply. So, Corsair TX series, uh, 650 watt. That should be good enough. It might not be a terrible idea to get a little bit bigger one. Yeah, but, I would definitely uh, recommend a up bigger in here. one. But the thing is, at the same time, that would be plenty for what if you're just running a single card. It is. It is. But here now, here's my argument against getting a bigger power supply. Because if you want to upgrade, your efficiency goes down eventually. It, though. Yeah, and if you want to upgrade, like you, you're guaranteed to have that power to support that. Yeah, and you don't have you, in to. The future. And you know, and you know, maybe maybe you want to upgrade your processor, and you want to add another video card, and maybe you want to add a sound card or something. Like you're guaranteed if you if you buy more than enough power, then you don't have to go. Well, I might be cutting it close. Maybe I should upgrade my power supply. Like power supplies yeah. aren't that expensive. No, they're not. They're, they're not. They're so, not a big yeah, like. For reference, the one I was looking at was 120. Okay, yeah, so I, it's... I have in both of my builds, I have the same power supply, and it's a thousand watt power supply. Wow, it's 162 dollars. Oh, that's not too much more. No. So, a thousand watts. I should look at. I should look into that. I okay. for you, know you I a, would recommend it. It's 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 a crazy amount more, but. It's not a bad thing to have. Money. I mean, granted that I'm trying to make the decision independent of monitors, but looking into the future, like the distant future next year, 2013, <laughs> which is so distant, <laughs> like it's one two month. months away. <laughs> uh, like, I will probably look at monitors and multiple thing, you know, right. monitors. It's but I mean, point. that's not that's not necessarily going to affect your so, power supply. So, yeah, because that they run on their own. Well, I mean indirectly because like if i have multiple monitors i might get multiple cards well i'll, I'll yeah, yeah i don't know about all this all this stuff, i don't know about Snowball, Luke, but i but... have both my builds have dual graphics cards oh okay so cool anyway all right so here's the big one the processor so it is an intel core i7 3930k sandy bridge Ooh, 3.2 gigahertz this guy's expensive how much? Uh, it's five sixty nine. Oh. And I have a really sad thing to say to you right now. What's that? It won't fit in that board. Yeah, I figured I would run into that. It's LGA twenty eleven. You got to go with a i seven thirty seven seventy. Yes. I seven thirty seven seventy. Or go with an i5 3570, but actually, eh, you might as well just go with the i7. Stick with the i7. I'll go with it's a hundred dollars more, and yeah. you get hyper threading, so it yeah, adds you four might more well virtual cores. I'll go with the seven. Yeah. All right. So, see, I'm learning tons of stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what? Well, it's kind of it, crazy. It won't, it won't fit with that board, but correct. I might be you based on another a, conversation. I might my be build looking actually for, has that setup. Well, if uh, you if you're looking for an LGA 2011 11. board, it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive. Okay. They're compared to his board that he had. It's actually, pretty well, yeah, it'll be a comparable price to that. Yeah. But if you're okay. So if you compare a LGA 1155 board with the 3,700 K to having a 2011 board with having the 39, 30, what 30, 30, 30, 30 board chip, it's yeah. going to be more expensive. Yeah. 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 Because both the board and the chip are more expensive. Yeah, both together. Yeah, the the thirty nine thirty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but if I don't wind up going with the board that I picked, I might do something else. Yeah, yeah I mean, could. I mean, yeah, yeah. 
I'll think about it later. But anyway, so I'll keep on trucking through this. <laughs> so RAM, I'm it's a given. I'm getting 16 gigabytes. That's that's Obviously. that's Obviously. just going to happen. Number. And it's easy. I've got Cor- Corsair Vengeance 8 gigabytes, two sticks of that. Yep. DDR3. Um and that's 80 bucks. No question. Moving on. <laughs> uh uh Corsairs, San, uh, yeah. the SSD. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I looked at this two. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What is there better RAM or something? Corsair Vengeance LP. Uh, because it does not say. It says I've I'll got read, it on. I'll uh, read it, whatever. Well, don't worry about it. Don't yeah. worry about it. We'll get into the details yeah, in yeah, after yeah. hours oh, or something. It, yeah. But uh, anyways, sixteen gigabytes given. I'm getting that well, much obviously RAM. You have to. Uh, so Samsung. Uh, SSD. It's a two hundred fifty gigabyte at SATA three SSD and that is two forty. Is it the eight forty? Two forty dollars. Two hundred forty dollars. No no, is it the eight forty or is it what? Samsung? Eight forty. Eight forty. Yeah, okay. okay. That's a that's a great SSD. It's I, I've been paying a little bit of time oh, wait, reviews. Well, I let me take that back. It's hundred eighty dollars, so it's not that bad. Oh wow. That I, is actually I, a really you know what good though? Price. Okay, in both of my builds I have the Samsung eight thirty and it's a two hundred and fifty six gig card. Or and it's thing, slight, and it's hundred and seventy. Is it still you SATA three? Yeah. Yes. The eight thirty is actually the last generation, but the thing is for the normal person you're not gonna notice you, it. I, there will yeah, be no yeah. and you're gonna save ten bucks. And you're gonna get six more gigs. Yeah, or you could well Really? After formatting and all that, I'll get six more. Gigs. Well, it's this is a 256 gig. Drive. Yeah, I guess that's true. These yeah, are going to be toss ups. The 840. I don't know. I, I you're not gonna you're not gonna suffer in performance. So basically, it's such a minuscule difference between the two that with SSDs, it's like, an SSD. I mean, yeah, it's SSD. Depending, like, it's fast as balls, no matter what. <laughs> depending on how far into the master race you get, yeah. And when oh, you God. get to like, I'm worried. <laughs> if you're gonna be on the forums and you're like, hey. Check this out. I uh, benchmark my SSD. It's faster than yours. It's faster than that Xbox oh 360. But don't if you get the person. 840, you'll be faster. All right, let's. We yeah. gotta keep. We gotta move. We yeah, gotta no, no. truck okay. through this. Keep, keep on trucking. So, Seagate hard drive, uh, spinning hard drive. Yep. Uh, three. No, no. 150 bucks. Terabyte. 7200 RPM. Six gigabyte. One terabyte. Gigabits per second. Uh, one terabyte. Yeah, wow. he can probably find a better deal. Oh than yeah, that, you can get, for 150 you can get, bucks. You can get like two terabyte Seagate Barracuda drives for like a hundred bucks. Seagate if, when they're on sale. My my two terabyte drive was a hundred dollars, and I bought it in like the middle of May. When? In the middle of this May last year. year. Last oh, year. last year. And it was it was like a hundred dollars. And I am all for having more storage space because yeah. I would Seriously. like to have it. Because I'm pro like not only is this I'm not only I'm gonna do video editing gaming on this thing but I also want it to I was telling Lucas this yesterday I want it to be a place where I store my media yeah, yeah. Not that's what I use that's what I use media. mine for not necessarily like my movies and stuff but like my actual own mm-hmm. media like pictures like I take a lot that's of that's what DSLR I use pics that's what I use more mine videos for videos and whatever music uh so moving on I've got and this is probably just a given I've got an LG um. Blu-ray, ROM, okay, yeah. drive, seventy yeah. bucks. That's the one that I actually have in mind. <laughs> mine, mine both had pi- Pioneer drives. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's that's my basic setup there. Normally, All with those through. drives, you go with a name brand. They're pretty good. Yeah. Um, you want to go or you want me to go? Um, I can go. Go ahead. You got two, right? I'm just gonna go with the one. All right. All right. I'll I'll go with. Should I go with my Intel build or my AM? I'll go with my Intel build. I'll talk about it's just my so AMD we're kind of comparing yeah. apples to apples. At I'll, the moment. I'll go yeah. to my AMD build in the uh, the after hours. All right, all right. Well, uh, what I've got is I've got uh, my case is a Cooler Master Half 932 Advanced. That is a case you need to look at. It's a, that, my airflow it's a case. Wait, did you nice just case. say 932? 932. That's exactly the one I said. That is H-A-F? exactly the one. Yeah. At Cooler oh, okay, Master yeah. HAF 932 okay. Advanced Blue Edition. That right? is... I, I have Advanced RC. It's not the Blue RC 932, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same th- same one. What? I think because mine's so. only 130 bucks. Wait, no way. Okay, well we different? need to we need to like speed up because anyway, Andrew. No, 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 I get it. I get it. Andrew is like complaining to me right now. Anyway, he wants to see the lights. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. And then I've got a in which I got really quick and dirty with my graphics card, which I could, if you I wanna, did a little bit of shop, shopping, I could be a little bit better. But um, that's a uh, like Sapphire uh, HD 7973 gig. 384 bit GDDR5. Um, the nice thing about it is, I've read some decent reviews on it, but at the same time, it's Sapphire is not the best known brand, but 
it comes with an AMD gift card for like a four in one game coupon, which I honestly have not researched it a ton, but it's it's just got a, it. It was one of the specials on New Egg at the time. Yeah. And then I've got a 750 watt power supply on it just because, and it's a Corsair TX series because I've had really good luck with mine. That's what I've had in mind for the last couple of years. Oh, um, um you know what? I don't want to interrupt you, but Ryan never mentioned the price on his build. Oh, total price. Yeah, we should definitely total mention price the total price. Was for my build was twenty one sixty one. Okay, that's so, actually very close to mine. But oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And um, I guess I'll just continue on going with mine here. I've got three. I've got four sets of uh, two by four gig uh, G Skill Rip Jaws X series, which is the same memory that I use in a server that well a server we originally set up for my house at home when that nick and gary were both living yeah. there and it's i guess i haven't had any issues with it but so i'm happy with it it's fast um and then my next i've got a asus rampage for extreme lga 2011 and that is for that would be the a board that would fit your the, 30, the 37 the 3790 or yeah 37 3790 or 30 or whatever. 3930 wow 30, yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry streamers We're dumb. but um that board actually right now it's it's a 409 it's a 450 dollar list board but right now it's got a 40 dollar instant off so it's down to 409 and then it comes with one free uh set of uh, g skill rip jaws Ooh, memory so you wow, get nice. you get two more four gig six so i've got a total of 32 gigs of ram Good Whoa. because cool. why not you know <laughs> i mean you can sell that off that's yeah. true it's so like right now i've got four kits because the, the nice thing about x79 is that it's such a big chip that it supports just a crap load of lanes of uh memory so it actually has a four lane memory on it which is really nice for like with Ryan, I'm picturing you if if you're going to be getting into doing any kind of like the video editing, photo editing, that is where you might start seeing the benefit of it. And but to be honest, at the same time, an 1155 build for an amateur editing, it's it's still going to be really nice. Okay. Um, and then I had also the 3930K Sandy Bridge, and with the K moniker at the end, that means that you can overclock it because it yep. has an unlock multiplier, which is a big deal. Because it's, it's actually really great because it makes it like nuts easy to yeah. overclock. All you do okay. is you you walk in your BIOS, you'd be like, okay, I'm going to up it from 15x to 16x. That's and all sudden, nice. It's, like, it yeah. it's just like really user-friendly. It's really easy. And then I've got that okay. LG. Uh, I've got an LG Blu-ray drive. And then I've got – actually, I've got the Kingston HyperX um, – you StarCraft fan. <laughs> yeah, you EG fan. Idra did it. But I've got the Kings and HyperX uh, <laughs> solid state drive. It's It was on sale. It's only 104 bucks for a 120 gig one. And I've got 120 gig SSDs in my laptop and in my desktop. And it's enough. And I've got a just massive hard drive to store everything. I forgot to put a hard drive in this build along with uh, like a spinning disc hard yeah drive. spinning disc yeah. hard drive which, but you're looking at spending 100 bucks yeah 100 150 bucks and this is actually my like second or third build because i built this just while we were sitting here looking at deals so Oop. but yeah it's <laughs> it it'd be really nice and i wish what's the price I on that build it. it's the final price is like 1914 but you got to include a hard bad. drive in it and so about, so a, about add two up, grand about two at grand, 100 bucks yeah, yeah and we'll say so, two grand admittedly okay. this is another build where i could cut a ton of money out yeah. of it if i wanted to yeah all right my turn um first thing before i start my build i'm going to talk to you about the service that i use that uh reddit's all right. subreddit our build a pc uses and it's called pc part picker pc part picker.com pc and part picker they have pr it's probably the coolest website ever like a lot of people, you know, originally went to Newegg, put their builds together, blah blah yeah. blah. But PC Part Picker makes sure that everything is works together. They they make sure that everything is compatible in your in your PC. So like That's slick. so like yeah. say say you start picking your P, your your processor. It'll only give you when you go to your motherboard, it'll only give you motherboards that are compatible with your processor. And then when you go to RAM, it'll only give you RAM that's compatible with your your motherboard. It'll only give you storage units that that are compatible with your with your uh motherboard. Like it's it's amazing like how awesome it is. Like yeah. and like when you get to cases, it'll only give you cases that your motherboard will fit into. That's that's so, really handy. Yeah. So 
I made this bill. And on top of that, not only does it tell you all the parts that are compatible, but it, it's a search ag- aggregate. So when you pick a part, it goes through, you know, probably, I would say like 20 to 30 different like PC part sites. Wow. And picks the best deal for you. That's sick. So it's amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to like, right. I'll send you the two links of the builds that I made okay. and they have like, like straight links. So you can actually just go through and pick them, open up the links and purchase them there. Yeah. So my build is an i7 3770k which was the processor we told you you kind of have to get unless you switch your board right right now for the board um it's a z77 extreme 4 by asrock it's an lga 1155 motherboard it's only 120 bucks okay real cheap um i didn't use corsair vengeance ram on this build i actually used it on my amd build i use their xms ram which is more of a workstation ram as opposed to like a gaming ram oh okay yeah is there what's the benefit of it's i mean it's just the way they cache things oh okay it's i mean really though there's not a huge difference between the two but actually the xms ram is a little bit cheaper than the vengeance okay um i'm always down for cheaper uh that's You're, what I have on my computer is XMS, yeah. and it's really nice. I use, okay. I use XMS as well. Actually, no, excuse me. I have Kingston. I have too many dang computers. Um, <laughs> so your your operating system hard drive is a Samsung 830, 256-gig solid-state drive. It's $170. Bucks. Um, then I also have a Seagate Barracuda, 2 terabyte, 720 RPM drive. It's only 95 Only 720 RPM. <laughs> <laughs> 7200 um <laughs> now here's the here's the 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 coup de gras if you will of this build two evega geforce gtx 672 gig cards very nice Whoa. cards. so very nice cards you were talking Whoa. about possibly adding a secondary monitor w- yeah this right here i am i'm i'm preparing you for that second oh monitor. man you are ready to run that dual screen wallpaper my body is ready it. exactly come on there Reggie. <laughs> but this is this is where all the money from this build is yeah is in these two cards but you know what it's totally worth it it's a cheap i, I got a cheap antex 1100 atx case it's got a decent airflow it's not great but yeah. it's decent and it's just your basic black box yeah with a, with a nice window on the side yeah. like it's it's nothing big it's a hundred bucks okay i've got cooler master silent pro which i have a cooler master silent pro on my computer and you know what it is by far my favorite power supply ever it is like dead silent that's a thousand it watt is, one. yeah it's a thousand yeah. watt power supply it is dead silent and this is only their their uh bronze certified they have silver and gold and i think platinum as well certified okay. and like as you go up it's just like nothing like you can't hear a thing from it that's pretty cool like my video card makes more noise than my power supply does <laughs> <laughs> i believe that the fans are the noise i would thing. hope so <laughs> yeah but like 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 you can't hear my power yeah. supply at all and uh last thing is a pioneer uh blu-ray writer it's a little expensive but actually i have I, I had a Samsung drive and I bought a Pioneer drive when it was on sale. Oh. And my Pioneer drive is like it's they they have the same write speeds. Yeah. But it optimizes the write speeds. Oh. Compared to my Samsung drive. I have both of them installed. Yeah. It optimizes those speeds. So my build actually only came out to eighteen hundred and fifty bucks. That's not bad. No, not at all. With two video cards in it. With two video cards, yep. That's pretty sick. But that is because I went through PC Part Picker. Right. And there's only like three or four things on here that are from Newegg. The rest are from different websites, but you can sit there and find the best deal. And also, that's didn't cool. you go with a uh, the just 3770. i7? Yeah. 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 But that's what he had in his that is that's, a That's the processor I had. That's correct. a very or, good. Yeah. No, you actually no, no. had the higher end one, which would have shaved off another probably Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I had the, I had the but, 3930. Um, right, okay, right, right, right. I... Honestly, for most people, would probably recommend the thirty-seven seven. The regular there's no there's no reason to spend that extra hundred bucks. Well, there well, is, but but you don't need to. Most okay. people don't. So, but that was my bill. No, no, that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna elaborate more in the after hours, but we don't want to cut too close on time. So I think we're gonna jump right into the <laughs> cut beer. Segment. Jump too much right closer. into the beer. We're gonna jump right into the beer segment. So last week the vanilla Java Porter one. Um. 
by Lining Kugel. Uh, no, it wasn't vanilla Java Porter. I'm gonna it was, change uh, this. It was a Snowdrift yeah, vanilla Porter. There's met, no Java in it. Uh, yeah, vanilla yeah, Java I Porter. Up the, name. the vanilla Java Porter and is you guys by know what? Brewing down. You know in, what that was? My beer. And it was. It was Lucas's beer. Aaron drink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it looks like I'm starting out this week. Uh, and I brought a little something from California. California. From the, a. Uh, it's not the Sunshine State. The, the medical marijuana state of the U.S. <laughs> uh, One of the medical marijuana yeah. states in uh, the U.S. I brought Orange Blossom Cream Ale by Buffalo Bills Brewing out of Hayward, California. And you know what? I find it absolutely delicious. I think it is top notch. It is, it's got a, a real citrus flavor to it. Um, not as much cream as I, like a cream, like you would get out of a normal cream ale. It's not as much as I thought. Oh, wow. But it has a really good citrus flavor. It's a really refreshing beer. It's definitely a California beer, I would say. That is refreshing. I like that. I, I really enjoy it. It's a good one. No. Oh, shoot. You have the opener over there. Oh, somewhere. yeah, for sure. Uh, so that is really good. Yeah. No, yeah, open up Because it's, it's really, for some reason, when I eat, when I drink that, I just think of um, ice cream. It's kind of like cream soda. Like. But, it's yeah. not, but it's not as creamy as I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not really overwhelming. not. It's crisp, though. It's not super sweet. Right. It's a, it's it, nice. that's, that's, a, that's a really good... It, yeah, like you say, though, it is definitely a California beer. Nice mm-hmm. and refreshing. I like it. I'm going to take one more sip of that. Sure. Uh, right, so, Ryan, go ahead and talk about your beer. So, I was at a beer tasting a couple weeks ago, and I had forgotten about oatmeal stout. And at the beer tasting on tap, they had oatmeal stout. And I was like, yeah, I seem to remember that being pretty good. And, um, oh, by the way, this black, what is it called? The, the, the poet, poet yeah. oatmeal stout by New Holland Brewing Company, from New Holland, Michigan. And, um, uh, man, in terms of stouts, this is one of the better ones I've ever had. Um, and definitely in terms, I've had... Is there somebody else that makes an oatmeal stout? Uh, forgetting, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Founders does. Founders, Founders makes, does. Founders makes a really good oatmeal stout, actually. So, I don't know if I've ever had that one, but um, I have had this one, and it's very good. Now you say, now you say, one of the best oatmeal stouts you've ever had, or best stouts you've ever had. One of the do best we, stouts I've ever had. Do we recall our previous beer yeah. of forever? Uh, Lion Stout. Oh, my. Beer of forever. Now, actually, Aaron drink. Now you've got me trying to remember if I actually had the Founders one or the New Holland one at my beer tasting, because this one tastes slightly different. Okay, I might have um, been confused, but in any did case, did you see? A, was there a bottle or was it just all poured for you? It was in a keg. Okay, never. Mind. Um, so I don't quite remember, but in any case, I like it. It's the poet. It is a really good bad. beer. It's it like I, it's actually a really good, really smooth stout. It tastes a lot different than what the lion stout was, but at the same time, it's really smooth. It's and I'm once again not a well, huge fan of stout. That's your that's your introduction of oatmeal. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, and um, I, I'm a terrible beer actually. Advocate right now, side but. note: I think the one I had was probably Founders, and I think it was a little better than this. Uh oh. Uh oh. I wasn't gonna say it because you brought it this week, uh, but I was gonna say the Founders was better. Yeah. No. I think <laughs> I think yeah, I, I got royally confused and thought and thought, really thought when I saw this one, I was like, oh, that's the one I've had. Yeah. And clearly not. I think it was the Founders one that's a little better, but but that's still one, really good. This one's still really good. Thought his oatmeal salt was delicious. Yeah. Um. Lucas brought some. Now, we got to talk about Lucas's beer. Actually, go ahead. Go talk ahead and about talk about your beer Speaking right now. Speaking of Founders, I brought Founders Bolt Cutter. It's the guy at the beer store suckered me into this. Actually, he didn't sucker me into it. I walked in and I was just like, I want a beer. You know, I'm I'm doing a competition here and I guess give me something special. And he's like, well, we got this here and it, it's really, it's kind of expensive and it made me sad at the same time. But is, I need to start doing that. Just like talking to yeah. the guy at the Tom's beer store. Tom's a good guy. Yeah. Tom's a good yeah. guy. Yeah. And, um, but it's like 15% by volume. I actually was, yeah, you can, taste you, it. You can definitely taste <laughs> you it. You can taste but, it. <laughs> I like it. It's I. I don't know why. I didn't think I would when I first tried it, but it's exactly oh. how Ryan just reacted. Is why it's like it's it's, it's good in that. Is there way. whiskey in that? I wouldn't be surprised if there is. Oh, or is it like brewed in whiskey casks? Because there is a heavy whiskey flavor to it. Yeah. Um. But we have something to mention about Lucas's beer because if it wins beer of the week this week, 
it is instantly retired because it was like twenty five dollars a bottle. And I'm probably not gonna be able to oh, find what? it. What really? Yeah. yeah, and it's and it's a limited edition brew. Oh wow. Yeah. So it, if, it's if it does anniversary. if it does win beer of the week, which I actually even if it wins like beer of this week, I still think the vanilla Java Porter will beat it out. Um, I, I'll agree with that, but but yeah. it it will be retired. So wow, that's kind of crazy. I, no, that no, has I'm just saying that, that that has like a really metallic taste to it and i think that's where the term bolt cutters comes in <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man but um so that anyone want to try a beer before we make With our picks? bolt cutter can i just say this sure we're gonna finish this and enjoy this tonight oh yeah I'll oh, we're gonna it. i'll drink it all night thank um, god lucas you're the first to pick this week because we're making you pick first this week because you always pick last let me um try out a orange blossom or poet which one honestly both but hand me the orange blossom first all right It smells good too. It's got a real good smell to it. It smells like uh, delicious, like orange. It just tastes like orange, orange juice after I've drank bolt cutter. Yeah, and then the oatmeal stout is yeah oatmeal. You going oatmeal? Um, not quite oh, yet. Okay. I want to try one more sip of the crazy one. The crazy one. The crazy one. The That's crazy all one. I can refer That'll to. put hair on your balls. Yeah. The bowl cutter will put hair on your balls. I'm between the orange bo- oh, God. in between the orange blossom and the wow. bolt cutter. The strange reason I like the bolt cutter is because of the alcohol content and just kind of like obviously that hair in your balls. Yeah. But <sighs> so what's your pick? I hate to do it, but I'm voting for the orange blossom. All right, Ryan. I'm voting for orange blossom too, actually. Believe it or not. I'm also gonna vote for the orange blossom because <laughs> Ryan brought the wrong beer this week. Yeah. I, <laughs> and if you would have, and if you would have brought funny. the, if you would have brought the Founders Oatmeal Stout, I probably would have voted for. Yeah. That. If I bought Founders <laughs> Oatmeal Stout, it would have been a good one. So, Anyways. so uh, I won this week with the orange blossom cream ale, and Lucas can go suck it because he's a douche. <laughs> uh, but we still have to pit it up against last week's winner, the Snowdrift oh, yeah. Vanilla Porter, and I we think should... we need to give out rings for the number of weeks I've won. God damn! I hate you. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's compare the orange blossom stout to the snowdrift vanilla porter, and then we can okay. close this bad boy out. All right. One more sip of the orange blossom here. Oh, chocolate milk! It's so damn good. I I love that beer. I honestly love that beer. I'm sorry, Lucas. I hate you. I really love. I that hate beer. you so much. Thank you, Kent, so much. I hate you, man. It was so pick. good. Lucas pick. What do you think I'm gonna pick? <laughs> Lucas pick Snowdrift Vanilla Porter. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan. Snowdrift Vanilla Porter. Nick, Snowdrift Vanilla Porter. That's it. Uh so two weeks running? Yeah, we got one more week that Snowdrift Vanilla Porter is able to compete. Hey Nick. Guess what? My beer won again. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck, fuck you. I fing hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all I'm right. sorry, Ryan, for making editing <laughs> like oh, a living it's okay. hell. It's okay. <laughs> it's all marked. It's good. All right. So uh, that's it for this week. Uh, episode six of the Tech Buzz podcast. Uh, my name is Nick Smock. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore Smock. My name is Ryan Splutzer. You can find me at Ryan Splutzer on Twitter. My name is Lucas Ritter, and I really don't want you to follow me, but drink, I'm at Aaron. Depresso is cool. Aaron Drake. Depresso is cool. And uh, also um, Tech Buzz on Twitter at yeah, Tech Buzz. Correct. Twitter, Twitter account. Yep. For on the, the Twitter. And we'll tell you about how when we're going to do after hours live streams because after this, we're going to be doing after hours live stream. It will be um, immediately after this. You can tonight, find right? our MP3, excuse me, you can find our MP3 podcast uh, at Libsyn, and that is at techbuzz.com. <laughs> excuse me. You can find that at techbuzz.libson.com uh, on Facebook you can find us at facebook.com slash techbuzz please 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 email us questions at techbuzzpodcast at gmail.com and if you want to watch any of our Tech Buzz After Hours live shows or just want the video version of our podcasts you can find us at youtube.com slash techbuzzpodcast we're going to see you guys next week but right now it's Tech Buzz After Hours live baby Get it in your ears.